Welcome back, lovely people. In a past video, I made this kind of bold statement saying nuclear power is a lie. And a lot of people didn't really understand it. Well, for a start, the YouTube version of the film was heavily edited because it discussed atomic weapons and Google and YouTube don't want any mention of weapons in their videos. The Patreon film went into greater detail. But today I'm going to share with you something really interesting. These two short films, I think, absolutely illustrate how in Britain we were lied to. It's all focused on the nuclear plant called Calder Hall. The first film is a PR exercise with the Queen opening up the power station with catchphrases such as too cheap to meet her and the future of Britain's electricity and providing power for the national grid. But the second film is actually made by Harwell and Aldermaston and the British government as well and clearly tells you what Calder Hall was built for. And that's the basis of the lie. Calder Hall, as well as all nuclear power stations, are government controlled and are really plutonium factories. And sure, you might argue that in other countries, the United States, Japan, France, that the civil nuclear power stations, but all of them are associated with weapons. Every civil power station produces waste, and that waste converts, cooks, mutates uranium into a small amount of plutonium whose only use is for atomic bombs. And that waste is stored at the power stations or recycled by the weapons department. So don't be tricked by the PR of nuclear power. Nuclear power stations are part of a grid that produces weapons. You cannot escape nuclear power stations and atomic bombs. Sit back and enjoy this 1950s fest of disinformation. First, we meet the Queen opening up the brand new white heat of industry, Calder Hall. From early morning, thousands of people have been arriving to witness an historic event in the industrial life of Britain and indeed of the world. Today, Her Majesty the Queen is coming to Calder Hall to open Britain's first atomic power station. The power station consists of three main parts. First, the turbine hall. This is the same as in any other conventional power station where electricity is generated by turbo alternators driven by steam. The steam to drive these turbines is produced in heat exchangers or boilers, of which there are four to each reactor. The reactor, housed in this building, is the furnace in which the atomic fuel produces heat. The Royal Party arrives at Calder Hall. And now, a film for you showing the other side of Calder Hall, the dark history of Calder Hall, not for public consumption, but this time being completely open and honest about its plutonium production. Calder Hall in Cumberland, opened by Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth in October 1956, was the first full-scale atomic power station in the world. In addition to producing heat, the Calder reactor, like those at wind scale, make plutonium, and both share a common plutonium processing plant. Under this still water lie the used uranium bars from the reactors, 
waiting for the fiercest radioactivity to subside so that they can be stripped of their light alloy casing, still under 12 protective feet of water by the groping claws of remote handling equipment. In the reactor, part of the uranium bars has become plutonium, and now they are hoisted high up to the top of the separation plant in which the plutonium is extracted by chemical means. Here also, the radiation is too great to allow handling except under water. Far to the north, where the bleak Caithness coast faces the Orkneys, the great reactor at Doon Ray, first child of Zeus, is raising its strange shape from the rocks. The huge globe at Doon Ray is a symbol of Britain's atomic progress, as British scientists toil at the never-ending task of setting the hand of man over the power of the nucleus the fuel of the universe that keeps the sun and all the stars alight. So there you have it. We were lied to because Britain wanted to join the big boys club and build a plutonium hydrogen bomb. Five, four, three, two, now. So there you have it, Britain did get its own nuclear weapon and the records of Calder Hall show that it actually consumed more power from the national grid than it ever produced. The truth is out there. Mm -hmm.